gentleman member of Calgary West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, drug dealers have upped the death toll by leasing opioids with carfentanil and elephant tranquilizer. Yes. We learned this news through an interim AHS opioid abuse report highlighting that carfentanil not only killed 30 Albertans in 2016, it has already killed 15 people in the first six weeks of this year. But when this government learned of the alarming death toll spike, it did not raise an alert. Minister, why at the very minimum did you not warn the public the moment you learned that carfentanil was killing Albertans? Why? Uh, thank you, Mr. The Associate Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and to the member for the question. Uh, as, uh, as was highlighted by the member, uh, earlier this month we released the interim fentanyl death report, which showed that 51 Albertans died from fentanyl overdoses, uh, which compares to 28 death per deaths in the same six-week period in 2016. Mr. Speaker, we know that this crisis is escalating, and with the emergence of carfentanil, we are very concerned as well, uh, which is why when the first cases of uh, carfentanil were detected in Alberta, a public statement was made by our government officials, and we continue to warn Albertans about the dangers of fentanyl and carfentanil. Thank you. First supplemental. The report is not a warning. Uh, given that carfentanil is 10,000 times more potent than morphine and 100 times more toxic than fentanyl, and given that someone overdosing on carfentanil may need multiple doses of naloxone and people assisting them need to know this, and given that carfentanil's extreme toxicity also puts first responders in danger, Minister, why have you not created a system that will alert all Albertans of surges and locations of fentanyl-related incidents to assist in saving lives and coordinating resources? Honourable Associate Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and to the member for the question. Our government officials have been working very closely with law enforcement as well as with first responders, uh, sharing data as well as information about emerging trends. Uh, what we are finding, of course, is that law enforcement uh, and first responders in particular tend to see trends emerging sooner than we maybe see them uh, across the province. And so having those open lines of communication and that working together uh, and collaborative <laughs> effort is how we're going to work together to respond to this crisis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Given that six weeks into 2017, fentanyl-related deaths are estimated at 51, that's almost twice the number as last year at this time. And given that fatalities could be astronomic this year alone, and given that in the United States, where 91 people are dying every day, and this death toll crisis is being compared to the AIDS epidemic of the 1980s, and Alberta was ground zero for it, Minister, how many Albertans have to die before you finally declare a public health emergency and bring all resources to bear on this crisis? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and to the member for the question. Uh, we are aware of what a serious crisis this is, and that is why we're multiplying our efforts in Budget 2017, spending up to $56 million over the next year to help Albertans get the treatment they need to reduce the harms of substance use and to raise public awareness. Mr. Speaker, I sincerely hope that when we get to the Budget Estimates Committee of Supply later today, that the members will vote in favor of our health budget.